A lot of us have pets. We feed them, water them, and change their litter box. A lot of, but what a lot of people don't know is what their pets do for them. Hi, my name is Denya Youngblood, and my presentation is on pet therapy and other ways pets help humans on a daily basis. Well, what is pet therapy? Pet therapy, or AAT, is a type of therapy that involves the animal with specific characteristics becoming part of a person's treatment. Animals that are commonly used for therapy include horses, cats, and dogs, or mammals. Mammals are better than, uh, say, amphibians because they have the warm and fluffy fur. Cats. There are currently 38.9 million cats in America. Studies and statistics show that if you own a cat, you are 40% less likely to die from a heart attack. They also say that cats relieve blood pressure and help keep your cholesterol in check. Cats even help with stress, anxiety, and depression. People who have cats in the house with infants, it will help the, when they grow older to have a, not as many allergies or asthma attacks. However, if the parent or the mother is allergic to cats, they're 10 times more likely to have that. Cats even help with a stronger immune system and people have Alzheimer's or muscle disorders because by petting the cat, it may bring back memories. Dogs. There are currently 46.3 million dogs in America. There's a specific kind of breed called the Exolo, which helps people who have chronic pain, and that's because this dog gives out an extreme amount of body heat, helping people with that chronic pain. Dogs are also good with, because they have their senses. They can sense when people are gonna have a seizure, or maybe people whose blood sugar gets really low, so people who have diabetes. Dogs can also help people stay in, staying independent by carrying around their medication or helping someone who's maybe blind and leading them. Dogs also help with research and some people make their dog their physical, par physical fitness partner by taking them out on a walk or getting out and going to the park. They also help build stronger bones. Dogs continued. Dogs also help with more interaction and less insulation, again, because you have to go outside and walk them or take them to the park. And they also help people overcome ADHD, so people who have a lot of energy go out and run. They also help people with rheumatoid arthritis and other kind of arthritis, and that's because they pet them or groom them and maybe let the dog lick their hand. And they help the blind and the deaf because they help lead them or tell them where they need to go. Horses. There are currently 2.4 million horses in America. They help with balance, so people who have autism, it can help them tighten their muscles or do the exact opposite with people who have cerebral palsy, loosen their muscles. And this is because at one point in time, horses have both feet on one side off the ground, so you have to use your balance so you don't tip. Horses also help people recovering from stroke, because they lose sometimes the brain cells on one side of the brain and that helps them recover their balance. Riding is a great calorie burner, muscle workout, and physical fitness, again because you have to have that good balance. And people who have arthritis, it can help them by grooming them or petting them again. Fun facts. It's estimated that 71.1 million Americans own pets. Over half of them own more than one pet. 63% acquire their pets before they reach six months of age, and 80% of pet owners get their pet or buy their pet so they have that companionship and have that pet. The two most popular pets in America are dogs and cats. There are studies show that there are more dog owners, but people who own cats have more of them, and that's probably because they work um, cats do better in groups, and they're easier to take care of. Pictures of my experience. The top two left are when I took my, cat, my rabbit and my two bottle-fed lambs to Prairie Hills. 
assisted living and that's when they got to pet them and a lot of them told me they haven't seen sheep since they were little kids. And then in the top right is when I took my horse to my Sunday school and gave rides to the kids. And right underneath that is me and my horse G doing barrels. And at the bottom right is when me and my brother, my horse Comet, went in a parade to, um, for the soccer in my community so we could help um, with that. On the bottom middle is when I took my bottle-fed lambs to my school and I let them, my classmates pet them. These are my resources and most of the pictures in this slideshow came from my personal experiences. Today I taught you what your pet does for you and I hope you learned a lot. Are there any questions? Yeah? The question was, where did I get the idea for this topic? Um, well, I want to be a vet when I grow up, so I wanted to learn more about that kind of stuff, about what they did for us, not only what we did for them. Any more questions? The question was, where was my most favorite place to take my pets? Um, it was probably the assisted living center because a lot of them could hold, there was one person there who did not want to hold a rabbit, but when he finally did, he didn't want to let go of it, and it made my day doing that. Yes? Um, in some cases, yes, they do, but it kind of depends on the situation. And you usually want a good-tempered animal. You don't want an animal that's not good with kids. Thank you.